Hello everyone, today we are going to take a prototype HD Zero 1S board. It's technically 1S to 4S for spin in this whoop inside the house. And this is going to open up our possibilities of running HD Zero on not only a 1S whoop, but also for our 1S toothpicks. You might have one of those already and you're looking to transition it over or you might be looking to build one, depends upon uh, where you're at with your journey in the addictive FPV hobby. And uh, this is gonna be a casual flight, so let's just get to it. So you might remember this whoop when we get back to the desk, we'll take a closer look at kind of my build. Not a highly detailed build, but uh, this isn't a product in the fact that it's not a, a quad that you can buy. This is a build. And like I said in the intro, this is a, a 1S prototype board that is actually going to be getting lighter. On my scale, the traditional board comes in at 5.68 grams. The 1S board that I have comes in at 4.88 grams. And the new board that Carl is reworking to actually be a little bit smaller yet is going to come in probably somewhere around three and a half to 3.7 grams. So even lighter than what we're flying here today. And I'm gonna fly this down below three volts. And I think that's an important point to highlight because some people when they fly their whoops, they tend to just fly until they won't lift off anymore. In this case, we can't quite do that. So we're going to fly it down below three volts and then you're going to see after it, the screen goes to the rainbow no signal uh, screen that it's going to recover. And because this isn't a quad in itself a product, I'm just kind of casually flying it around the house just trying to demonstrate it to you. And like I said, we will go over what I used, although I do think in this particular case, I probably would have used 20,000 KV instead of 22,000 KV. But th there's a lot that we can tinker with in that you know, if we want to make a build of our own, whether it's to run different props or different motors altogether. But uh, I wanted to show you this 1S board and we've got our battery voltage right down there in the lower left-hand corner. You'll want to keep your eye on that. This whoop comes in at about 30 grams. I weighed it shortly before the video. So if I'm remembering that correctly, I will uh, put it on the scale after the video or after the flight footage is over so you can get a, a first hand look at the actual scale and what it reports. Uh, of course, my camera is exposed because I don't have an ideal canopy. Actually, there's not an ideal canopy on the market. Uh, we could print one of our own, but TPU versus a plastic mold. Yeah, you're going to add some weight there. We could add one of the plastic rings that will come in the Mobula 7 HD Zero. Uh, that's going to add some weight as well. But, you know, these cameras are not cheap. So, therefore, you'll want to uh, do something to protect your camera. Also, stock is very hard to come by. Uh, the word that I have is that hopefully next month, February, for those who aren't watching it in the moment, uh, we should have more stock of all the HD Zero components, although I won't guarantee you that this 1S board will be available. And if this board provides to be just as good a performer at a lower weight, I can't see why we would have both of the same Whoop style boards. I would think we would just do uh, the 1 to 4S board rather than doing a 1 to 4S as well as, you know, the other board. It just seems to me that we might want to just convert all the Whoop boards into the 1S uh 1S to 4S variant of HD0 VTX. But uh, there could be possibilities that I'm not thinking of that you might want to uh, highlight in the comment section down below so that I can become aware. And, and I'm sure Carl will come along and he'll be uh, looking at the comments as well. And I should note that when it comes to working with companies, just like with anybody who comes to the channel, I'll offer my opinion. But as far as you know, getting invested in one side or another, I don't really do that. I like to try everything. So this is something obviously with 1S that we're not going to be able to do with the DJI current BTX. So if you're wanting this sort of image quality in 1S, probably should look at HD0. And there we go. <laughs> All right, we went to the rainbow screen and uh, you probably saw the frame before we got down below 3.8 volts. I think it was 3.76 volts. And uh, then we went, uh, the VTX could not transmit anymore. So uh, I had to disarm. And now I'm going to try to remember where I just disarmed to. Because, of course, I flew blind there for a few feet. And then I'm going to come back over to the quad and pick it up. So this is our traditional board that we've been using in this style of build for a while. It's the board you'll also find in the Mobula 7 HD Zero which if you didn't see that, this is a 2S version that is a collaboration between HD Zero and Happy Model. Uh, that should be available to actually purchase on the market. No more pre-orders relatively soon. 
And the reason for the delay in stock is the city or the location that uh, these parts are made are is actually in strict lockdown again. So they're having difficulties getting to work and manufacturing doing all things. But hopefully, uh, like I said, in February, we'll see more stock. Uh, so I did break it right over here, but I broke that when I installed that. Hopefully you can see that that little chip on the edge, when I screwed this screw down, uh, the inside of my canopy pressed down on uh, to that chip and then it pushed the board and it, it snapped off the, the perforated edge. So they have these perforations along the sides. They're meant to break out. You might call them breakouts. Um, so that broke out on that particular board. And they have changed that a little bit too to make it actually easier to break out. But what the reason why I was kind of drawn, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the, the PCB is a touch, a touch thinner. And I'm not certain you'll be able to pick that up in video. But uh, yeah, the PCB is thinner. And for all intents and purposes, the rest of the components look to be the same size. I don't think they've miniaturized anything. But, uh, you know, I could be wrong in that. Uh, but everything else is pretty much laid out. Let's weigh the quad and we can talk about my build a touch. So like I said, it weighs just over 30 and a half grams. And then we add our battery and it comes in at a little over 44 and a half grams. I can't say I was flying this specific battery in that flight. So this was one of the batch of batteries. It could have been a GMB battery that I was flying during that flight. So I've got the Tiny Whoop motors on here, the 0802, 22,000 kV. Also another component that's extremely hard to get a hold of. Uh, Newbie Drone, a Z 40 millimeter props. Uh, the board down here is the Beta FPV Express LRS board. This is a new one. It's a 5 amp ESC. And let's see what else. This is a canopy. I think this is the canopy from the Crux 3. Might be the AE65. I think those canopies are identical. Uh, at least they look identical. But you want to look for one that has got the indentation here behind the back so that you can uh, just natively screw it in there without having to use any sort of adapter to, to make the camera fit. And that's really it outside of the HD Zero board. Uh, I guess my antenna here, I use the ORT antenna. Uh, I buy them from uh, Race Day Quads. You can probably find them in a host of other places as well. And this has the shorter MIPI cable. And in this case, I think we could even go with an even shorter MIPI cable. I can't remember what size the shorter length is. I think it might... Uh, I, I shouldn't say. The shorter MIPI cable made for HD0 is in here. And we could even go quite a bit shorter. You can see I've got three turns or even more three turns to kind of squirrel uh, that MIPI cable in there. And also that ex shows you how uh, our camera lens is exposed. But we can get it through this canopy without having to drill out the canopy. So that makes the build process a little bit easier. Oh, I should draw your attention to the fact that... Uh, let's see if I can bend this front motor down. Right down in there, you can see right below behind the front post, you can see my Express LRS Cube antenna on that Beta FPV board. And then you could probably see I've got a little bit of foam down right here between the post and the board. I raised the front end of the board up just a touch to give myself a little bit more clearance on that antenna. I did not want to crash and break the antenna off. You know, I want to fly this and enjoy this. Uh, so I, I put that little bit of foam in there. Uh, the connector I'm using for the battery is the GNB. Obviously, it used to have a BT20, but I have way more GNB27 batteries than I do BT20. And also note that that, that is the cross board. That is not the square board that has the, uh, I think it's a 12 amp ESC from Beta FPV. This is the 5 amp variant. Uh, when I wired up power, I went straight. You can't really see it. I went straight to the battery leads on the top. So these are soldered through on through holes. So for the HD0 VTX, I would just went to the top side of the battery lead. And I found that you couldn't actually power it through 5 volts. It would You would have signal until you armed. So it seems as though the Beck, um, the 5 volt rail on this board cannot supply enough power to the HD0 in order to be able to fly it effectively. Even on a fully charged battery, as soon as I armed and try to lift off the ground, if I were wired to a 5 volt pad on the board, then I would get uh, VTX brown out. So I went directly on top, which is fine because again, this is a 1 to 4S board. It'll be fine. No capacitor. Didn't bother to use it. Oh, I just noticed I did break off a little bit of that rear breakout. Must have been on one of my crashes. But that's really the build. And as I said, unfortunately, this isn't something you're going to be able to buy right away, but I wanted to show it to you. It's pretty exciting. 
Uh, you know, spring isn't that far away. Uh, some people might already be in their warmer months, depending upon where you're at in the, in the world. So getting this, like I said, is going to be a little bit of a challenge, especially right now. If you can find it in stock, remember, it's not the 1S board you're finding in stock. It's the traditional board. But hopefully this 1S board comes to market uh, in February sometime. And in the meantime, you know, keep your eye on your favorite FPV shops. If your favorite FPV shops carry HD0, if your favorite FPV shop doesn't carry HD0, you maybe send them an email and let them know that you're interested in HD0 products and maybe they'll start carrying it. Uh, but otherwise, I'll put some shops that have been carrying HD0 stuff down in the links uh, in the video description, and you can keep your eye on those locations to see when uh, the 1S board comes to market. I'll probably post a short, like, hey, it's available sort of video uh, because I know a lot of people don't see the community posts, and if you're not on mobile, you won't see them at all. So uh, I'll, I'll post a short follow-up video when this 1S board becomes available because you can build a toothpick. I know that I've got plans to build an outdoor quad with the 1S board. Or if you just want a lighter VTX on your quad for your micro purposes, this 1S board is probably going to come in between 3.5 and 3.7 grams. So if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.